Ladies and gentlemen and honored guests, I'd like to present to you today the uh, story of the making of Alice in Wonderland, that uh, wonderful 12,000 pound bronze sculpture that's uh, installed at the end of the oval boat pond, model pond, in Central Park in New York City. Uh, the work was done by my deceased husband, Jose de Creff, the world uh, famous sculptor, and I think you might find the uh, story very interesting from the first seed of the idea to the final realization. The uh, beginning of the Alice in Wonderland project and the whole meaning of it was uh, it was to be a memorial to the deceased wife of George Delacorte and she loved it, the Alice in Wonderland story and she loved children, she had many children. The project really got off the ground in, at a Christmas party with a group of Spaniards at the House of Ernest at Cal from Columbia University when uh, a friend, um, Fernando Texador, who was a friend of Jose's, asked him if he would be interested in a project for a playground sculpture in Central Park. Jose was interested in the project and he uh, told um, Texador to bring the drawing over to his studio. When he saw the drawing, he said, well, I'll have to interpret, if I do this, I'll have to interpret it in my way. So um, he did, he prepared a scale model based mainly or influenced by the Tenille drawings, the original drawings, and shortly after that, Delacorte came to see it and he said, ah, this is more like it, because apparently he had not been very thrilled by the original presentation. So the contract was signed and the work began and it took uh, roughly two, two years to complete. It was 12,000 pounds of uh, bronze, and it was inaugurated right here in this spot in June of 1959. And here we have the completed project. At the inauguration, there were literally hundreds of people here, and the sculpture was veiled. And when it was unveiled after the ceremonies, the children ran up and covered it. You couldn't even see it. It was a mass of children climbing all over it. So it was received with great enthusiasm and it's been treated like that um, for many years. Here you see the completed Alice in Wonderland and it's still filled with children and the parents. This is the original Texador drawing, which um, we felt was very much of, in the light of a sort of a cartoon. It was meant to be a children's playground that they could climb over. But uh, de Creff said, well, if he's going to do it, if he were to take the commission, he'd have to interpret this in his own artistic way. And uh, Texador agreed, so then Jose went about making a small scale model in clay about 10 inches in height. This is the model. When Mr. Delacorte came to the studio and saw it, he said, ah, he said, this is more like it. He loved it. Uh, they had one correction they wanted to make was that Alice should be a, an older girl. This is the back view. Uh, you will see as we progress with this uh, slide presentation, the transformation of the piece into the uh, final version which it kept increasing in beauty and detail and uh, scope and monumentality. All right, this is the half size scale model in plastiline that uh, de Kreff did uh, when we went to the, uh, uh, our summer place in the barn, open air barn, uh, which will later become a full size after they enlarge it. We'll show you how it's made. All right, in the beginning, he used uh, metal, pieces of metal to make an armature. An armature is the, what supports the weight of the clay for the model. He made a very strong armature. This is the uh, 
first stage of the Mad Hatter. Now, all this white material you see on there is paper mache. Uh, it's a rather unusual system of working, uh, preparing the foundation. Because later on, he would apply clay on top of this, probably an inch or an inch and a half, to flesh it out to m do the final modeling. This is uh, paper towels prepared with homemade water paste glue uh, that I spent hours uh, preparing in the, in the barn. Uh, and then he would take them, like uh, when they were wet, and use them in watts to apply them directly over the armature, which when it dried within one or two days, it would be very, very hard. It's hard, it's durable, and it's light. Uh, these are the other cr uh, animals. That's the um, Dinah the cat, and that's the uh, dormouse, and we have them out there in the field. I thought that even in, in this stage, when they were rather thin, they, they captured the whimsy and the spirit of uh, the Tenniel drawings, which uh, Jose used to as his reference. Uh, yes, here we have the, uh, the rabbit, the white rabbit. Uh, he's almost ready now. He is ready to have the clay put on him. Yeah, we have another scene, very beautiful. Uh, you know, I, it brings to mind that uh, quotation from the book, uh, "'Twas brillig and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave." That's what they're doing, they're gyre and gimbling in the wave. Here we have Alice uh, as she begins to come into form uh, with the paper mache. She is an old, as you see, the girl is probably as old as Donna. My daughter, we had a daughter at that time who was eight. All right, this is sections of the uh, clay and the combination with the uh, paper mache. A lot of these uh, pieces were done in sections and then assembled, and he changed his mind several times about things. Here we again, progressing toward the completion of the clay. This clay, by the way, is not a water clay. It's plastiline. It, it, is a, it never hardens. And an interesting thing about this plastiline, this was the same plastiline that Daniel Chester French used in the making of the monument of uh, Abraham Lincoln, which is now in Washington. Here we have the, the Mad Hatter. He's all together, ready, finished. Another detail of the, this is the Cheshire cat over Alice's shoulder. Again, we have the white rabbit. And he says, what time is it? What time is this? I'm in a hurry. I will be late. And the other quote, he said, Mary Ann, Mary Ann, fetch me my gloves and my fan. Back view. This is the uh, another. Car There's a lot of little uh, details uh, in the sculpture. Little animals and snails and lizards uh, around. That this was especially for the little tots that would, who aren't big enough to climb on Alice, would be able to play underneath and see all kinds of nice little things there. Um, this is the complete model. Now there's a crane, I, th I don't know if you can see, there's a big chain on the uh, top of, uh, attached to the inside of the armature that we, uh, de Kraft put there in case there should be any problem with it falling or uh, moving or sinking, which never happened. Now at this point, um, Jean Leofanti, who was an enlarger from Staten Island, came up to spend the weekend with his assistant and he went about piece by piece making negative plaster molds of every section of the uh, sculpture, which is quite a job. He numbered them and labeled them, and then when he got back to Staten Island, he assembled them and made a positive plaster. This is the half-sized model. The positive plaster would then be used, uh, enlarged, uh, full size, and from that they would continue with the process. This is the... Uh, completed uh, um, Alice in Wonderland, and that's Decreft putting the finishing touches. Here we have a, a, f a photograph of the completed uh, plaster from the negative uh, molds that uh, G uh, Jean Leofanti, who was on the right, took when he was in Hoosick Falls, and that's Decreft on the left. It came out beautifully. From here on, they're now going to enlarge this by a process of enlargement into full size, which will be exactly h half, 100% up. Here we have an up-close detail of the Alice in Wonderland head. Now, at this point, the 
I wouldn't say all the work was completed because at each stage he would add something to it. He would uh, make it richer or fuller. And later on, he added a bow on her head, on her hair, which I think uh, was a very nice touch. And he uh, changed the changes can come about by working in the wax, which is a later process, and even working in direct plaster. So at any given time uh, throughout the process, he could change things, alter it. Now that's the profile of Alice. Yes, the full-size plaster of the uh, the white rabbit. Yeah. Oh, this is the uh, port this is the photograph of uh, Fernando Tex Texidor, Jose's uh, uh, partner in this, and they're both underneath the enlarged. This is an enlarged mushroom. By the way, I just want to say something that all those little lines you see there with the work of my hands, because Jose said, so no one's going to see it, you can make the little lights. Now, uh, we're into the uh, wax uh, process. Well, what happened from that after they made the enlargement, they took, sent the piece to the foundry. This is the Modern Art Foundry out in Long Island City. From the large uh, plaster, they make a rubber mold. From the rubber mold, which is a negative, they pour in wax, and they get a wax casting. Now, this wax casting is a, a probably a, not more than an inch thick at any given point. It also has a core of plaster inside of it that makes it solid inside and wax on the outside. The reason for this is when they go into the next process, when the wax is melted out, they pour the, the bronze in the cavity. Uh, that's Jose working with hot tools, uh, with hot tools uh, right on the, it melts, and he can shape and refreshen it. Um, th this is a very difficult process, the ret uh, retouching of wax, and he was really quite a master at this. Oh, yes. Uh, in, uh, this is uh, Jose de Craft and uh, another famous sculptor, Jacques Lipschitz, working in the retouching room. By the way, the retouching room has to be very cold to keep the wax from melting because this was, we're into summer now in this. And they worked together. There's an interesting story about uh, Lipschitz. He had a daughter who was about 13 years old, and he brought her one day to meet Jose, and she said, Mr. De Craft, you are the finest sculptor in the world. And of course, her father is a very famous sculptor. The father said, why do you say De Craft is the finest? He says, because he's making Alice in Wonderland. After the retouching on wax, and I told you it had the core inside of it of, of a certain kind of plaster. They now coat the plaster, pardon me, the wax, which has what they call gates and vents attached to it. They seal it in a large, let's say about a, a, a large, uh, what they call the investment mold. The investment mold is, is a great huge, I think it's, you can see it in the back there. They put this investment mold in an oven, right side up with a hole in the bottom, they heat the mold and the wax melts out. After the wax is melted out, they cool it, they turn it over upside down, and they pour the bronze in. Now the purpose of the vents and the gates is to hold that inner core in place so it doesn't slip down, and let the gases escape and everything fills in. All right, there's a, a closer, um, clearer picture of the investment molds. They're very, very heavy. You see here on the left, that's uh, molted bronze there. Uh, this is a, uh, a finished full size, the Cheshire cat in the tree. Now we had a big accident with this. On the first time in the investment mold, when they melted the bronze, the wax out, apparently all the uh, wax didn't come out. So when they poured the bronze in, the whole lower half didn't uh, fill in, which meant they had to do the whole thing over again, going back to the wax retouching. It was quite a catastrophe, time consuming and expensive. Here we have, um, this is Bob Spring. He was the director of the Modern Art Foundry, and this is the moment when they found out that this tragedy had occurred. It didn't make them very happy. Yes, this is De Craft conferring with another of the workers, and they're all very upset. That means actually that De Craft has to do another big job again. That's the other brother, uh, John Spring, and they're all conferring about this problem. Here we are now with the finished um, uh, mushroom. I think you saw that mushroom in plaster. 
and the graft is sitting happily under his mushroom. This is now the completed bronze casting of the Alice in Wonderland sitting in the uh, yard of the Modern Art Foundry. This was completed actually early in spring, but the inauguration was going to be uh, late spring. I think it was in May, and it, so it sat there all the time. Now what happened is they, the, these pieces were all done in sections, so they would fit in the investment molds, and then they were welded together and assembled, and then patined with acids to give the color. So the piece is virtually ready now, ready to go. This is the construction site uh, that um, was, we were sitting in for, we wanted to visit the construction site. They had a, a landscape architect uh, prepare a very lovely setting with trees and they had embedded a bronze plaques of some of the uh, uh, excerpts from the uh, book. There we're looking at it, this is in the process. All right, Alice is ready to move to Central Park. They got this enormous crane and they put it on a big flat uh, truck top, ready to go, and it came into New York. I think this is one of the most remarkable pictures of Alice moving down Fifth Avenue. I, I can't imagine what those drivers were thinking when they saw this. They moved the truck up right into the park, came right up, and they shifted her in place, and now she's seated there. This is the inauguration day, and this gentleman standing in front is George T. Delacourt, the benefactor. Delacourt was a patron and a connoisseur of art, and he was so delighted and so happy that he was able to see the completion of this uh, sculpture, and he was absolutely thrilled by de Kreft's interpretation. Here we have Commissioner Robert Moses, who was the park commissioner at that time, and he too, he gave, they gave wonderful speeches. They were all delighted, and they knew that how important this sculpture would be for the children of the New York City and children from all parts of the world and country that come to see it. And this is uh, de Kreft listening to the dedication. Behind him is the veiled uh, sculpture, and that's Donna Maria, our daughter, in the front there. This was a happy day for all of us. That's, that's me with my share share cat grin, and Donna and Dr. Reeder and Milty behind us. And here we're getting ready for the unveiling. They had everything but a blare of trumpets. There she is, unveiled. Now what happens in the next few seconds is quite a, a, quite a, a sight. Well, as soon as that veil came off, the children ran up and covered it. It was covered for the next hour. You couldn't even see it. And all the nannies were there, and it was just a scene of great commotion. Here the uh, guards uh, uh, are taking away the wire for the uh, uh, veil. They were afraid that they might something would happen with the children on that. Yes, and here is I think one of the most important uh, photographs that we have. This is uh, De Kreft and my daughter Donna and myself seated in front of the Alice, where I think you can that picture tells a lot of words. That one of the re real reasons De Kreft did this, which was a departure from his usual kind of work, is that he thought that Donna would be very proud that her father made this for the children. And of course she was. He, he, I found out that he never really told her that he made it for her, but she found out about that later. Um, this is a, a scene of a, uh, I think he was a court jester. He wore bells and he danced around and he used to come every day and play with the children and read stories to them. And this was even in fall, it was very cold. They had storytelling hours there. And of course this is visited by thousands and thousands of children all the time, winter and summer and they play and they romp there and they, it's a, the scene of a lot of happy events. Yes, this is another, I think, a very lovely photograph of the, the, little, the little fellow underneath there. Uh, what happens a lot, when they're too small to climb, uh, they have a great time underneath, but if they stand up too soon, they bump their head on the mushroom. Uh, this is a typical day in uh, Central Park where the mothers are standing there and the children are playing. I used to worry that it was so slippery or dangerous the children would fall off. Uh, as far as I know, in the past 34 uh, years, since 1959 when it was inaugurated, there's never been a serious accident on that. Another close-up of children playing. They love to touch her nose and the uh, rabbit ears and it's hard to see it clearly, but a lot of those um, parts, uh, the color has changed. They have actually rubbed the patina off, which is a dark green, to reveal the brass-like uh, coloring underneath. That's just from touching it. 
So the, the sculpture now has sort of a rich blend of the original patine and the, bron the brass, uh, bronze look showing through. This is a back view on a quiet day, not many children, but it's situated in a very lovely uh, spot. Now the trees have grown in more, and it's, it's a very luscious uh, setting, but this is when it was first new. We're now at the end of the slide presentation, but I have one little story I'd like to add that I think wraps everything up very nicely. A few days later, um, the Kreft and I decided to visit Alice in Wonderland. He wanted to see it in, uh, at, in the evening with the evening lights, and when we got there, uh, he was very pleased. Twilight was uh, coming upon us, and he decided to climb up on the, on the Alice, because he really hadn't tested it out very much. And I'm standing there watching him, and he climbs up, and he sits in Alice's lap. And at that point, a man came running up behind us, yelling, get off of there, get off of there, that's, that's, a, that's for children, it's not for adults. And we turned around, and it was Delacorte. And Delacorte apologized, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize it was you, and so forth and so on. And the end result was that Delacorte climbed up and sat with Jose in Alice's lap. And that was a picture to behold, and I'm the only one that saw it. I wish I would have had a camera at that time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation, and if you have any questions, I'm open to questions. Thank you.